Good morning, everyone. Good morning, one and all. Um, welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, May 15. Friday, May 15. And um, today we say goodbye to Molu, Stella's, Stella's husband, who passed away recently. So do keep Stella and the family in your prayer today at midday as we say farewell to Molu and say a final prayer for him and for the family. <clears throat> so let's begin our morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god forever amen the night has passed and the day lies open before us so let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So the psalm for this morning, <clears throat> psalm for this morning is Psalm, psalm 66. Psalm 66. Psalm 66, shout for joy to God all the earth, sing the glory of his name, make his praise glorious, say to God, how awesome are your deeds, so great is your power that your enemies cringe before you, all the earth bows down to you, they sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid, and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. You went through we went through fire and water but you brought us to a place of abundance i will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when i was in trouble i will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams i will offer bulls and goats Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Um, there's a lot in this psalm, and um, Keller divides it into four parts. But I, I want to read the last part. I mean, the first part is, is all about praising God for his goodness and for what he has done. And even though he, he brings us through difficult times, difficult places, verse 11, you brought us into prison, you laid burdens on our backs. But verse 12, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I want to read the last bit, the last, um, the, 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 the meditation on the last part of it, from verse 17 to 20. Two principles for prayer. Praise must accompany pe petition. The psalmist cried out when he was in trouble, in verse 17. But at the very same time, his praise was on his lips, his tongue. Expressions of need should go along with confession of God's greatness and thanks to him ahead of any answer for whatever his wise response and timing will be. This settles the heart even before you get an answer. The other requirement for prayer is not perfect holiness, but a sincere willingness to turn away from sin. Purity of heart is to will one thing. As Joshua learned, there's no use asking God for things when you are being disobedient. Two principles. One is praise, not just petition, not just asking God for things, but thanking him and praising him for his goodness to you. Even if he doesn't give you what you want, God has given us so much that we cannot but praise him. And the second principle confess our sins he says if i cherish sin in my heart the lord will not have listened that, that word cherish means nurse to 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 take in sin as a as, as a friend to 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 have sin in my heart as something that i cherish and love um it's not the same thing as saying we sin we all sin every day we're not perfect but if i love sin if i love to to, to wallow in the mud of sin, then that's a hindrance to our prayers. There, there are lots of hindrances to our prayers at times, and that's one of them. Um, sin in our hearts, the scriptures always remind us that we need to come to God with a pure heart. Uh, not because we are pure in heart, but because we, have a, we, 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 we seek Him with pure intentions. We ask for his forgiveness. We ask for his help. We come recognizing our own sinful state and seeking him. And so let's, let's pray the prayer that Keller has in his book. Lord, show me my cherished sins, the ones I confess, but into which I keep falling. This is because I want to stop, but I don't really want to stop. Don't let me dishonor you by being divided in my loyalties to you. Help me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It reminds me of St. Paul in Romans chapter 6. The thing I want to do, I, I, I don't do. The thing I don't want to do is the thing I kept doing. There's, there's, there's a sin that Hebrews says that easily entangles us. And it's that sin in our heart that we cherish we don't want it but we want it and we we must try to root it out by the grace of god and the power of the holy spirit all right um my next uh reading is uh, is first um it's luke luke chapter 6 luke chapter 6 1 to 11 luke 6 1 to 11 <coughs> Luke chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David said, what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, 
and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. He also gave some to his companions. And Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he went into the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand, on your, and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them all and then said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But they were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. Here Jesus is upsetting the religious authorities again. Um, of course, the Sabbath was one of those um, sacred um, practices of the, the religious people that you dare not break. And Jesus broke the Sabbath, not because he did not believe in keeping the Sabbath. It was because he believed that the Sabbath was deeper than just not doing stuff in one day. Um, for Jesus, it wasn't about not doing work. It was about doing good. Remember, the Sabbath is God's day. And, and it's, it's, it's set aside for the work of God. Um, for the Pharisees, it meant not doing anything. But for Jesus, it means doing good on the Sabbath, doing that which is, pleases, is pleasing to God. And so um, he was able to do these things to show that the Sabbath was God's way of saying to us that we are to give back to him what he has given to us. So the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. That means Jesus Christ himself, because he's Lord of the Sabbath, he has the right to interpret the Sabbath the way he sees fit. Because he is the one who gave us a Sabbath. In fact, he himself is the Sabbath rest in whom we find true rest. <clears throat> and so we have here um, the, the Pharisees getting upset because Jesus dared to do good on the Sabbath. There's another thing I, I, I like to point out here. Notice Jesus said, gave them two options. Which is best to do? Should we do good or do evil? Should we save life or destroy? I mean, it's as if Jesus is saying, if you do nothing for this man, if you do nothing that is good, it's not that you are neutral. Rather, you are doing evil. By doing nothing to help, you are, you are not being neutral. You are actually doing something evil. And, and, and that is a fundamental um, principle to remember, is that not doing good is the same as doing evil <laughs> in the mind of Jesus. Um, Jesus expects us to do good, to help, to help people, to, to, to be a blessing to others in the world. But the more we not do that, when we are presented with opportunities to do so, it's not that we are being neutral. There is no neutrality in God. You're either doing good or doing evil. You're either um, saving life or destroying it. You see, uh, by Jesus not healing this man on the Sabbath is another way of destroying the man's life. It's doing evil. And so he sees that it is better to do good than to do evil. It's a principle to think about. And so the Sabbath, Sabbath day, First of all, it's meant for God and it's meant to be doing good, not just, it's not a day of inactivity. It's a day of, 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 of righteous activity, that which is pleasing to God. But ultimately, and we are told this in Hebrews 4, ultimately, the Sabbath 
is Jesus Christ himself. The Sabbath is not a day. It's a person. We rest not in a day, but in the person of Jesus Christ. That's why the Sabbath is eternal. Because Jesus Christ is eternal and our rest is in him. And in him, every day is Sabbath. Every day. We, we do that which is good. We seek to do good every day. Not just one day of seven, but every day. Because Jesus Christ is the true Sabbath, is the true rest that God gives us. And so in him we find that rest. In him we find that peace. Let us pray. Our Father, we give you thanks for this new day. We thank you, Lord, that even in today we can find our true rest in Jesus Christ, who himself is the true Sabbath. In him we, we do what is right. We perform good deeds through him. We live righteously. But in him, oh God, we thank you that in Jesus Christ we can find rest for our souls, rest from our labor, rest from our worries and our cares and the troubles of this world. In Jesus Christ we find eternal rest in you. And so, Lord, we give you thanks this morning that we, our, our Sabbath is not so much in a day. Our Sabbath is in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you. We come to you this morning, Lord, as a new day. We present this new day to you and we, we are grateful for your grace in granting us life in, uh, on this earth to continue our pilgrim journey in this pagan world that you have placed us. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for this grace. We pray, Lord, that you'll sustain us even today more and more. Give us the grace to, to live for you, to be strong in our bodies, in our muscles, in our limbs, in our minds. But give us grace, Lord, even more to be strong in our souls, in our, in our spiritual, uh, in our, spiritually. Lord, give us that faith to trust you more and more. Today, may we grow deeper and deeper in your love. Today, Lord, make us better than we were yesterday in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that he... In him, we will find security. In him, we will find peace. Despite the pandemic and the anxiety and the worry around us, may we find our true rest, our Sabbath in Jesus Christ today. Lord, so we bring our day to you. We bring our families to you. We bring our St. Savior's family to you, Lord. We, we pray for our people today, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, locked away, isolated, walking about, some working. Lord, remember them today. Remember all your people today, especially those in our church, on our, on our electoral roll. We remember them today. Remember them, Lord, in your mercy and in your grace. Whatever they're suffering today, whatever they're going through, mentally, emotionally, physically, and of course, supremely, spiritually in their hearts, what are they wrestling with today, Lord? We pray that you will meet them at that place today. Give them that eternal rest in Jesus Christ. May they find sweet Sabbath in him today, Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, Molu and as we, as we lay his body to rest today and say farewell to him. We pray that you'll forgive him of all his sins and grant him a place in the abode of the righteous where you are. We pray for Stella and the rest of the family who mourn today as they say farewell, as we say goodbye. We pray that you'll comfort them with your comfort, Lord Jesus. With the comfort of your Holy Spirit, O Comforter, Come and abide with that family today and with all those who mourned his passing. 
So, so Lord, we remember him. We remember them. In your mercy today, we ask for your grace. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will, by the power of your Holy Spirit, show up in that farewell service and bring comfort to that family. And may your Holy Spirit dwell with us in that time that we'll be together and be with them for, e for eternity. And so, Lord, we entrust all these to you today. And we pray for your grace to sustain us in whatever we are doing, locked away, walking, working, whatever we are doing today. We entrust the day to you. And those who work today, especially those who are looking after the most vulnerable people in our society, we pray for them. We ask, Lord, that you'll be with them today. Those in the NHS, the doctors, the nurses, the carers in the care homes, we pray for them. Those who are looking after Monica and, uh, and Jean T, we pray for them. Give them your wisdom. We pray for those, Lord, who are seeking vaccination and scientific the scientists who are, who are trying to find a solution to this virus, who are trying to help to eradicate this virus from our, from our world. Give them wisdom and help them to work uh, in your, in, 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 with your grace and help them, Lord, to find this solution so that our world will not be in fear. But Lord, we pray that we will return to to embracing one another again getting close to each other and appreciating the gift of one another again and so lord we entrust all these to you today in jesus name amen and so let's say the saint patrick's breastplate prayer christ be with me christ within me christ behind me Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen amen and so let's finish by listening to <coughs> the song that we have chosen as our theme song i do love this song and and it's loved by many in our church. And so let's listen to Faithful One, So Unchanging.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace today and forever. Amen.